Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurveda healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Welcome back. We are here today, brand new Cabral concept on our wellness and weight loss Wednesday, where the topic is going over, essentially debunking the obesity paradox. So the obesity paradox, I don't know if you've heard it before, but it's really interesting because when you're looking at the best longevity and anti-aging research, something, I don't, it seemed profound at the time came out that really shocked the entire health-based industry. So for many, many years, we've always been told that you know, the leaner you are, the greater chances for living a long, healthy life with less chances of disease. Because the higher your BMI, and I'll explain that in a moment, and I'll explain also the shortcomings of the BMI, the higher the BMI, a greater chance for cardiovascular risk, greater chance for high blood pressure and stroke, greater chance for type 2 diabetes, and greater chance for cancer, or at least many types of cancer. Okay, so we look at all those, we say, well, those are the top four common most causes of, of early death, meaning like controllable, uh, and I know that we can go back and forth on controllable or not controllable, but for the most part, that is at least the top four to five, and the fifth one being all the medications that our people are on. That's arguably number three, now, which is um, essentially medical, not misdiagnosis, but medical mishaps, which is combining medications incorrectly, misdiagnosis, et cetera. But we're not going to go down that rabbit hole today. But the truth is, the more that you see your doctor, the more medications you're on, the more, unfortunately, chances you have for something to go wrong. So all of that hinges, though, much of it around inflammation and how weight affects inflammation and it leads to certain disease pathologies. And that's simply how the, the pathophysiology of what happens in the body when the body is exposed to foods that are not ideal for it, not enough movement, not enough sleep, higher levels of blood sugar, higher levels of insulin, you know, the whole, all of that, right, that we know leads to atherosclerosis and heart disease and uh, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, and potentially cancer. So when the study came out, and this this is, again, it was very interesting, and many longevity scientists bought into it too early, and that's that we have to be careful, right? So when research comes out, I, I talk about this with my team all the time. I say, does it make sense, though? Does it make sense? And if it doesn't make sense to our current level of knowledge, which we filter through integrative health, so what does that mean? Well, we filter it through... Ayurvedic medicine, traditional Chinese medicine, bioregulatory medicine, traditional naturopathy, like literally every form of medicine. And if this is telling us something different than we've known about for 6,000 years of natural health, let's not say it's not true. Like, like legitimately, maybe it is true. And it will prove those things wrong, okay? But let's be careful accepting it too quickly. That's what I try to do in my Friday review. I share with you research. I share with you good research. I share with you potential breakthroughs. This one just didn't make sense. But people bought into it really quickly. And here's what it is. I know it was three minutes of buildup. But here's what it is. And this matters. And you need to know the background. So people who were considered overweight, not obese, but people who were considered overweight, which is a BMI between 25 and 30. We'll talk about that in just a moment. People who were considered overweight, were considered and found to live the longest. Now, that was really confounding and, and confusing to researchers because here we are all along understanding that, well, people who were at a lower BMI, which is between essentially 19 or a little bit higher, but is 18.5 of the study, but basically 19 through 24.9 with a normal healthy BMI, Again, it doesn't necessarily mean healthy, but it means um, healthy weight range. And we'll, again, we'll go through the shortcomings in just a second. We're considered to always be the best candidates for a long, healthy life. And that's because if you look at the blue zones, if you look at any of the longest lived people, they were all fairly lean people. 
and we can go through their diet, which I've done before, we can go through their movement, we can go through their culture, like all those different things, and it's all part of it. And then we know obesity, which is a BMI above 30, well, it was always understood and always even thought about, well, the more weight you have on the body above your ideal weight, the more prone you're going to be to disease and, and, and uh, overall inflammation and disease process, which leads to earlier death. So another study came out that said being overweight, this is, this is very important, and this is what ultimately undid the obesity paradox, where if you were overweight, you actually lived the longest. That's the obesity paradox. It just didn't make sense. So being overweight actually led to a longer life. Let's break that down here today. New study comes out, obesity and overweight BMI can raise risk of death by, 20, by 91%. So study, I'll, I'm going to post for you, it's journal, journal of Population Studies. It increased one's death by at least 22% and upwards of 91%. So being overweight, really in more of the obesity category, categorically, increases your chance of dying for many different reasons, which I just stated many of them right now, by up to 91%, at least 22%. So the reason why I share that with you and the reason why this is really important is that I talk about this all the time and I do it from a health span and lifespan perspective. I have absolutely no care in the world to say that there is one ideal body type. There is not. I've been studying Ayurvedic medicine for a long time. I've known since the, I don't know, 2004, 2005 or so at the latest, that Ayurveda has always said, we have the ectomorph or vata, the mesomorph or pitta, and the endomorph or kapha. And inside of that range, you can have one individual who weighs 40 pounds more or 40 pounds less for the most part, and they're still considered healthy they're still considered perfect for their own ideal body type. But when you do move too far underweight or too far overweight, it can, it doesn't mean it will, but it can lead to a lot more of a disease prognosis in your life, which leads to a lower quality of life because you are in pain and suffering, and it can lead to a earlier death. And to me, an earlier death means that's it. Like everything that you've wanted to do with your life, your hopes, your dreams, your goals, if you have kids, watching your kids grow up, your grandkids, being able to walk and move and experience life, right? Just human being. Being a human is over. But also before that, again, if it was this way and it led to an earlier death, you might have been like this for 10, 20, 30 years. So my goal is not to say that there has to be one ideal body type because there doesn't. But there is an ideal overall weight for health, not body type in terms of vanity, but actual health. And it is within that BMI range. Now, BMI, um, I have an easy calculator. It's free. You don't have to sign up. You don't put an email or anything. It's at stephencabral.com forward slash assessments. Take your BMI. I'm at the top end of the range. Like I'm at 25. So consider it overweight. But if you probably saw me, you wouldn't say, oh, he's overweight. It's just how my body is built, right? At 5'8", 167 pounds, that's about my height and weight. It's typically what I weigh. It's what I've weighed for, or weighed for a long time. Yeah, I'd be considered on the higher end. But if you have a lower body fat percentage and some muscle in your body, and I'm no bodybuilder, like that is no longer part of my lifestyle, you're going to have a little bit higher of BMI. If you're physically fit, if you can run, like all of these different things, you don't have to worry as much about BMI. It still matters though. Like I just like to share that with people because a lot of my colleagues will say, well, it doesn't matter if you're, you know, 10% uh, body fat and you're 5'8 and you weigh 200 pounds. It does. Like honestly, I just want to let my colleagues out there know it does. It is greater stress in the body. Most likely to get to that weight, it's a higher production of hormones and an anabolic state, which still leads to a greater propensity for heart disease, high blood pressure, and cancer, not necessarily type 2 diabetes, I agree with that part, but certainly heart disease and certainly cancer. You, are in, you have higher levels most likely of mTOR, et cetera, et cetera. I don't want to go down that road today. What I'm saying is it matters. But 
And, and, and for the most part, it is obesity that truly matters. And that's being well over your ideal weight. So find your BMI, don't obsess over it. I'm not saying that. And then we just work to get it towards that ideally 19 to 24.9 range or 19 to 25 range. Now, let's go over it again. How do they debunk the obesity paradox? And the obesity paradox, once again, was people that were overweight, and again, considered overweight by BMI, between 25 and 30, that was their BMI, uh, were found to live the longest, right? And let me, I'll, why don't I read it exactly now? Obesity paradox. This refers to how the lowest mortality risk among B, amongst BMIs can be found among overweight people. While obese and healthy weights have the same mortality rate and extremely obese BMI of 35 and up, and underweight people have the same level of mortality. Again, like very strange study, really strange. Let's break it down. Here's the problem with the study. The study had come with the hypothesis that factors at play behind biases in BMI mortality linked studies concluded that lower mortality risk among high BMI individuals were due to recent weight gain and that high mortality risk among low BMI individuals would do, was due to illness causing the weight loss to bring them there in the first place. In other words, this is due to reverse causation. Let me break down exactly what they meant by that. Okay, let's say, unfortunately, someone had cancer and they went in, uh, let's just say my weight, for example, okay, 167 pounds. They went in by the end of their um, cancer treatment and all the different trials, unfortunately, they passed away. And when they passed away, they weighed 125 pounds. Do you see how that works? Over the course of six months, a year, two years, or whatever it might be, they lost all that weight. Their body was in an extremely catabolic state. When they died, they had a really low BMI. So that was included in the study. And unfortunately, that causation is not correlation to the actual truth. But because before that, well, they weighed 167 pounds, whatever they might have weighed, right? And the reverse is also true. So the high BMI individuals were due to recent weight gain and that high mortality risk. So what happened was this, and I'm going to go on, I'm going to finish reading the article, I'm going to break down the science again. So exactly 20% of the subjects with a healthy BMI were overweight or obese in the previous decade. So 20% of the people with a healthy BMI used to be overweight or obese. This group had significantly worse health than the other categories, specifically because of their weight wasn't stable. Okay, so they found the healthy group, which didn't live as long as the overweight group. Why? Because these people in this particular study used to be obese or overweight, had lost some weight, but unfortunately still carried with them the heart disease, the high blood pressure, et cetera, whatever they were suffering from. Meanwhile, 60% of those people with an obese BMI and 37% of those with overweight BMI had been at a lower BMI in the preceding decade. Those who recently gained weight were found to be in better health. Why? They were at a healthy weight for over 10 years or the preceding 10 years. And then when this study came about, some of those people, 37%, had become overweight. So they had been living a healthier life and actually then added some weight, gained some weight. To finish the study, the result was that rather than a bell curve where overweight was the healthiest BMI, meaning like a bell curve, um, if you've never seen a bell curve in, in science, it's one of the best ways to explain science, math, like anything, right? E e emotional IQ, regular IQ. Basically, what you have is you have a um, inverted U that goes up and then down like a bell, right? And so the middle of the bell, the majority of it, oh, the, the healthiest would be people with an overweight BMI. That's the obesity paradox. On the left, you have underweight, they don't live as long. And on the right, you have overweight, they don't live as long. Okay, that's how it was thought to be. And now I'll go back to reading the study. There is now a straight line instead of a bell curve where a healthy BMI has the lowest mortality risk and being underweight has no significant increased mortality. So it looks like this. If you're watching this on video, fantastic. If not, I'll explain. I'm basically moving my hand and trending up and to the right. So up and to the right is increased mortality. Or if you want to look the other way, you can go straight and then down and to the right. So it's always up and to the right or down to the right. Down to the right would be the fall off in longevity, the fall off in years. So the goal because it may also it makes sense. Like I would, 
The obesity paradox was something I had read over before, but honestly, I didn't give it much credence because it never made sense. And that's why, I, again, I, I urge the field in general, because you're getting results or because you see something that's currently backed up by science, you need to be careful following the science. The science is always changing. And you can always find a study or a anything to back up your world viewpoint. So my recommendation is this. Understand that I, I want you to live the longest, healthiest, happiest life possible. And I've known this for decades now that the way that we do this is we help people get to a healthy weight. And if there's still any health issues left over, we resolve those with wellness-based protocols, ideally at-home lab testing to figure out what are the underlying root cause symptoms, even for being overweight, honestly. Because you look at it and you say, oh, why is this person overweight? Could be estrogen dominance, could be high cortisol, could be low thyroid, uh, could be lower levels of uh, testosterone, let's say, in men, could be uh, imbalanced levels of glucose, hemoglobin A1C, insulin. Like, there's lots of reasons. It's not just one reason. So, you know, you run a lab like the stress mood and metabolism test or you run something to figure it out. Lose the weight, get to a healthy body weight. Again, you don't need to be super thin. I'm not saying that. Just close to a healthy BMI. That's all. And then after that, any wellness-based issues? Okay, let's resolve those. Autoimmune, headaches, migraines, allergies, gut issues, et cetera. Heavy metal overload. And then we work on longevity. Then we work on all of the different things that are going to enable you to live the longest, healthiest life. So hopefully this was helpful. Again, do feel free to let me know if there's any follow-up questions, any future podcast topics. I'm happy to talk about it. But again, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Feel free to share this show with anyone you believe it could serve. Are you ready to heal yourself and then go on to heal others? If so, the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute can help you discover proven functional medicine protocols that blend the best of seven different healing disciplines from around the world. I personally share with you the exact handouts and protocols I use in my private practice that enable people to get well, lose the weight, and live longer, stronger. I want to pass this information on to the next generation of health coaches, and that is exactly why I created IHP. We are the future of the health coaching industry, and the skills and knowledge you will learn will make you an in-demand certified health coach anywhere in the world. Although we have many medical professionals taking the IHP certifications, no experience is necessary, and half our members have no previous health certifications. At the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute, our motto is a health coach in every home. Our goal is that you take this knowledge and then share it with family, friends, loved ones, your community, or any practice where you create a career you love and can be proud of. The global IHP community is filled with some of the most kind and caring people in the world, and we can't wait to welcome you into our world soon. For more information or to set up a discovery call with one of our IHP Health Coach graduates, simply head over to integrativehealthpractitioner.org.